Earth is the only known planet that supports life. For millions of years, life has taken shape, nurtured, and evolved on this planet. But this life-giving planet can sometimes turn life extinguisher too. Of all the natural disasters, nothing is more hazardous than earthquakes. The Himalayan region of the Indian subcontinent has witnessed regular and devastating earthquakes, making it one of the most active seismic zones in the world. Why do earthquakes take place? The theory of plate tectonics implies that earthquakes occur in response to relative plane motion and their convergence. Around 50 million years ago, the Indian plate collided with the South Eurasian plate and began constructing the Himalayas and the Tibetan plateau. Regional compression produced broadly distributed earthquakes along the Himalayan range. Historical events suggest that large earthquakes occur on the shallow portion of the mega thrust boundary. In past 200 years, India has witnessed several earthquakes and many of them have caused great damage to life and property. The significant of them are the 1897 Shillong Plateau, 1905 Kangla, 1934 in Nepal and Bihar, 1915 Assam, 1993 Kilari, 2001 Bhuj, 2004 Sumatra, Andaman, 2005 Kashmir and 2015 in Nepal. Earthquakes cannot be stopped, but its effects can be definitely mitigated by proper monitoring, information dissemination and necessary actions. The Shillong Plateau earthquake of 1897 prompted Indian Med Department to set up the first earthquake monitoring observatory at Alipur, Kolkata. Thus began the journey of earthquake monitoring and research that has covered many important milestones and landmarks. After independence, the number of such observatories rose to five. And by 1960, there were 15 observatories. In 1964, additional four stations were installed under the Worldwide Seismograph Station Network. By the end of 1980, there were about 50 observatories. As many new stations were set up, great efforts were made to modernize and digitize the monitoring operations. The disastrous earthquake which hit Kilari, Maharashtra prompted modernization and the beginning of a digital era. In 1996, 24 seismic stations were upgraded from analog to digital. In 2001, Delhi got its own network with the setting up of 16 stations. After the Andaman Sumatra earthquake, 17 stations were installed in 2007. In 2011, 20 more stations were installed in the northeastern states of India. In 2015, 36 stations were modernized. Currently, there are 84 earthquake monitoring stations which beam the data in real time through VSAT connections. The end of 2017 will see 116 such stations all over India. In August 2014, the Ministry of Earth Sciences decided to create a new institute which is dedicated for earthquake monitoring, seismological research and risk mitigation. National Centre for Seismology came into being born under the ambit of Ministry of Earth Sciences. The objective of NCS is basically to monitor earthquake, to provide uh, hazard products and to do seismological research. In seismological research, we are engaged in, uh, in understanding earthquake processes. We are also in, uh, engaged in understanding the structures, the, the structures which host these earthquakes and we are into microzonation. So these, these, are, the, these are the main things which we do in, uh, at NCS. NCS conducts earthquake monitoring, monitors the functions of central recording station, data dissemination and sharing with community, seismic microzonation and seismological research. NCS scientist Mr. G. Suresh explains in detail the activities involved in earthquake monitoring. 
Presently, we maintain 84 seismological observatories spread across length and breadth of the country. All these uh, observatories are equipped with the state of the art uh, seismic equipments and uh, VSAT communication facilities. So, we get the data on real time basis to the uh, two centers, one is at uh, one is at uh, Delhi and another at uh, Hyderabad. So, this data will be used for the earthquake monitoring and also to estimate the tsunamigenic potential of the ocean bottom earthquakes. The central recording station at the NCS head office in Delhi plays a major role as it receives and processes all the information from various regional centers. Uh, CRS is actually central listening station. So here date, uh, we are receiving seismic data from our own Indian stations, Indian networks through VSAT and uh, from global stations we are receiving data through internet. So in, in real time actually here and then uh, we have actually th uh, set threshold values to each and every station uh, like if any uh, dif uh, difference in uh, amplitude will be there then it will trigger. Uh, our system will auto locate the events and it will uh, tell you the where it was and uh, of which magnitude it was and uh, uh, of which intensity it was. And then after that uh, we disseminate those data automatically as well as uh, manually through SMS, through fax, and then uh, we update our, uh, on our website. Earthquake mitigation not only involves scientific interventions but also active participation from the public. Thus, data service becomes another important function of the NCS. As far as the data service is concerned, we actually archive and storage the seismical data, waveform data as well as the catalog data. Now, these data we are providing whenever some earthquake occurs. Some insurance company gives an uh, approach to us for the certificates. So those certificates we are issuing. So from based on the, that certificate, the uh, claimant will get the insurance claim, etc. That is the one service. And beside that, the data is also being used for the various national uh, projects. For example, hydroelectric dam, construction of nuclear power point proje power uh, uh, projects. So there also we supply this type of data. Uh, seismicity report also we are giving for the area specific area. That is the one thing. Then beside that, for the study of research purposes also, we are supplying the data. Digitization is also a painstaking but extremely important step in modernization of the processes. We have accumulated about 15 lakh seismic analog charts at Ridge Observatory. These charts are getting spoiled due to its aging effect. These uh, analog charts containing uh, historical significant earthquake informations that needs came to uh, convert into electronic form so that the scientific community can understand it and uh, uh, pursue the further research for understanding earthquake processes and mit uh, taking mitigative measures in future earthquake. An important activity of NCS involves seismic microzonation. It is the process of subdividing a potential seismic or earthquake prone area into zones with respect to some geological and geophysical characteristics. About 450 sites we selected for our geotechnical, geophysical and geological uh, investigations to find out several parameters coming under the earthquake, uh, earthquake risk uh, assessment. Those are uh, engineering bedrock depth, uh, what ground water table uh, depth, uh, the site amplification uh, of the uh, sites, uh, spectral acceleration and also we find out the peak ground acceleration. Based on all these six parameters, we generated the earthquake uh, hazard index parameter and we found that the Delhi has a very, very varying strength, seismic strength. This we have can see is divided in three regions, green, yellow and red. Red region is highly susceptible to earthquake hazard followed by green, uh, followed by yellow and then green. This study will be helpful for the assessing the extent of the building in Delhi and in addition to that future planning of the construction in the Delhi region. NCS plays a crucial role as it provides earthquake information to all the stakeholders and government agencies for taking up relief and rescue operations in case of major earthquakes. It also provides inputs to 
prepare seismic zoning maps and establishing power projects. NCS also aims to take the research benefits to society through its public awareness programs. Other than earthquake monitoring, NCS is involved in seismological research, understanding the earthquake occurrence processes, estimating crustal structure, crustal deformation processes leading to earthquake generation. Public outreach is another crucial component of NCS's activities. Various public awareness programs are being planned to spread awareness amongst people to know about earthquake disaster, its mitigation, do's and don't and also to conduct in-house awareness programs for school children, teachers and public authorities responsible for structures and community centers, lifelines, etc. Uh, NCS has got a vision that we want to, uh, uh, we want to do a take up seismological research through earthquake monitoring and understanding these process and our mission is to create an earthquake safe society. So that's our mission. Scientific advancements have made possible to understand the complex process of earthquakes like never before. It is National Center for Seismology's mission to create an earthquake safe society through earthquake monitoring and research.